On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with my 2004 GMC Envoy XUV for the last time. I hope we're gonna finish this thing up today. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today, like I said, I'm here with the XUV. In the last few videos, we've gotten the mid gate working, we've gotten the tailgate working, we've gotten the roof working, and now we just need to button up the roof. I got remotes for it, program the remotes. Uh, we're gonna grease everything, all of the tracks, clean the tracks, make sure the roof runs quickly and smoothly, and uh, put all the chrome back on. And then I've got all the BG treatments hanging out over here. We have 44K for the fuel system, and then we'll do an oil change with uh, EPR. You run EPR to bring back the uh, ring seal and it'll probably improve compression a little bit. Like that stuff, it's kind of magic in the can, just like dynamic. Uh, we used dynamic on the Camaro a long time ago. If you want to see that thing save an engine, it was incredible. So I didn't ever want to be a believer in oil additives, but BG stuff is absolutely insane. And then of course we'll go back with new oil and MOA and uh, XUV's finished, that's that's basically it. We're gonna start with the easy one, of course. Uh, remote programming, hopefully these have batteries in them. They were like $15 on the old internet. When I got the car, the only thing I got was one, it's an original key, it says GMC. Uh, somebody's gonna get two remotes for some reason. The remotes always come in pairs, so I give whoever buys the car both remotes, even if they only have one key. Close all doors, that's step one to the old remote programming process. And now hold unlock, which is tricky because do you ever know which way unlock is? They don't have any indicator on here. It's that one. Put the key in, on, off, on, off. Lock cycling, let go of the button, push two buttons. And then I realized why these key fobs wouldn't work after I tried programming them like 15 times. Uh, I bought these for the Aztec. I bought Nissan Xterra ones and Aztec ones. I mean, why can't I get one car with the key fob lately? Let's see if it works in the Aztec. Now, this was an XUV video. Put key and ignition cylinder turned on. Turn key to off. Put key in, take it out. Put key in, take it out. Put key in and leave it. Three beeps. Grab remote, press both buttons. There's one remote. Remove key. Test remotes. I think we got it. Hey, Aztec remotes. Now that that totally unrelated repair is complete, uh, let's get back to the XUV. Okay, the rails on this thing need a lot of help. They're full of dirt. Also, uh, this had crash wrap on it because the glass was probably broken out. So that needs a lot of help. It's very sticky. Everything you touch to it just kind of stays there. Uh, we're going to clean this all up with IPA. I've got a rag here. And the most important thing is the tracks where the roof slides. They're, you know, you can see that big layer of dirt inside there. And the goal is to get all of that out. So I have this IPA sprayer here and we're gonna spray it with a bunch of alcohol and wipe these things out. Probably gonna completely ruin this rag in the process, but it'll be worth it because all of this dirt here will be out of the mechanism. Obviously this is just about 10 seconds. I'll keep going until this whole thing's clean and uh, then it's time to lubricate. After much scrubbing with the IPA, you can see the tracks are all looking pretty clean and my hand glides nicely. I've got all the dirt out of all the areas where it matters and especially up here where the roof runs, still a little wet alcohol sitting down in there. But what we're gonna do now with all of these nice kind of cleaned up seals is take the Shinatsu and I just kind of massage it into both my hands and I get pretty much just cover my hands with it and then massage the seals. And that's my go-to. It makes everything stop squeaking and it makes the windows run well. This might look really gross, but I promise you it's a winning formula. You can see it like perfectly restores the seals and I'll get it in the slides as well down in there. And hopefully everything runs correctly after that. It kind of absorbs all the grease. Speaking of the Chinette, if you have a car with like a squeaky top or something, like a Target Top Corvette, uh, do all the seals with this, it'll shut up. Stop squeaking completely. There we go. All the tracks have been cleaned out with the microfiber and IPA and then fully scrubbed in with lots and lots of grease. You can see it brings back a nice sheen. It brings back all the black and should make this stuff all glide. And down in the areas where those pins rotate, where it has that knuckle that locks the roof in, uh, I left little dabs of grease. Hopefully the pins will pick that up 
and kind of work it into themselves as the roof runs. It's time to put the chrome back, I think. And uh, honestly, it's just time to put everything back. So let's jump to the time lapse. Okay, the roof is all wrapped up. Let's see what happens when we use the key thing to open the roof. <laughs> the real question is, can I? Ah, oh, look at that! I did not know it would go both ways. I thought it just opened the window. Oh, hurry up and close. Close, okay. <laughs> that is cool. I really meant to get in there and clean all that glass. Hey, and with the uh, seals kind of lubed up, the window does what it's supposed to do. You guys want to see something really cool? Check this out. So, uh, you know, back in, oh, the early 2000s, all cars had to have that anti-trap feature in case, I don't know, you got kidnapped or you got stuck in your own trunk or something like that. Well, in the XUV, you go, you say you're stuck in the back like this. Ah, okay, now I'm stuck in the back. The window's rolled up. There's obviously no handles or anything like that. You're legit stuck inside this car. Well, you're not. You've got the escape button and... There we go. It's got an emergency escape. <laughs> How cool is that? Now I need to climb back in there with the window up so I can uh, clean that back glass. This is so cool. Just stand here at the back with the key and everything happens. Before I jump over to that oil change and throwing all that BG product in this thing, I figured you guys want to see the car transform one time. So let's transform it. Here we go. So we'll start over here at the switch panel, sunroof. Yeah, I know the door's open. The sunroof is super fast too. Really cool. So there's the sunroof open. Here comes middle glass. After the middle glass is down, we'll go ahead and hop out and get the mid gate down since it's kind of the next step. So you go one, and then you go two, and then you go three. Truck, bed, almost engaged, check that out. Hopping back in, you open the glass. The roof is opening. The roof is fully retracted and you're ready to pick up your grandfather clock and your armoire at the store. It's not exactly spring loaded. It just has like a piece of metal that lets that down kind of gently. And of course you can pick the height of this thing you want. Look at that. It's supposed to fit a four by eight sheet of plywood. And you know what? I think it can fit like, I don't know, seven of them. Cause you can, I think right there, that's the plywood hump. And I'm pretty sure I mean, that's actually a lot of plywood, a lot of sheetrock, 10 sheets of sheetrock, 10 sheets of plywood, something like that. This thing is incredibly useful. It's just so cool. And personally, one of the best things is you unlatch this, slide it back up, flip these seats down here, and you can sit in the back and basically look up at the sky. It's almost a complete convertible. Before we do an oil change that's worth probably more than this entire Envoy is, we're going to start with the BG Triple Threat right here. The Triple Threat is 44K for the fuel system, uh, EPR before your oil change, 
This is uh, engine performance restoration. What this does is help the rings reseal and softens and dissolves hard to remove deposits from piston rings in as little as 10 minutes. Reduces blow by, uh, you know, all the good stuff. Clearly it works. Dynamic worked like uh, unbelievably. This is like kind of a scaled down dynamic. And the instructions are uh, just dump in the entire can for four to six quart engines. Run for 10 minutes at 1200 RPM. Shut engine off, drain oil, remove old filter. Here we go. It's like pouring water in. All right, let's start it up, and uh, I guess I'll just sit in here and manually hold it at 1200 RPM for the next 10 minutes. Oh, look at that. It was ready for an engine oil change too. When I was doing dynamic, it said watch the oil pressure. I'm watching the oil pressure. Still looking pretty good. We have uh, five minutes to go here. This engine's a tank. That's 10 minutes, plenty of oil pressure. Coolant temp came up to right where it needed to hang out. Let's do an oil change. Lifted this thing up and I don't think I could be happier if I tried. The uh, inspection cover or access cover for the oil drain is gone. So that saves me a bunch of time and the oil filter is right there. And it has one of those uh, frame things on here. If you can see what I'm talking about, GM engineers a lot of these funnels in. As you dump oil all over everything, it would typically just go all over the frame and run everywhere. It hits this funnel instead and drains right into the spot where you need it. So let's get the oil drain and uh, dump this thing out. That is some dirty looking oil and very runny with the EPR in there too. But you can see the light go through it. It's not the worst thing ever. Let's go clean all this up. Going in with the long grabber. I don't think the long grabber is going to reach, but it's worth a shot here. I finally got the oil filter starting to move. And that was a disaster in and of itself. Oh, never mind. I wrecked all of that. <laughs> At least they were running a pretty good filter. Mobile One EP. Now that I've bathed in the lifeblood of robots, uh, we're gonna get the new filter on. It's a Wix XP, better, obviously. And uh, throw an oil in here. Like I said, but it's probably worth more than the car. Mmm, sauce. That last filter was on there so tight that even with that three jaw filter wrench, it didn't want to come out. When you're doing the BG triple threat, I like to start with the MOA before you put the oil in. That way uh, you don't overfill the oil by a ton. So we're gonna try to go for the good pour here. Boom, look at that. And now for an oil that is literally better than the Envoy. Uh, Motul 8100 Extra Clean EFE. This is the 5-dub-30, and of course it's basically approved for everything there is because it's the ultimate in full synthetics. I put this in all my personal cars, but I usually try not to put it in flip cars because it's, it's literally just worth too much. But today, this car gets gold. The 4-2 takes seven quarts of oil. So we're gonna go through a full jug and then quite a bit of another jug. We've got that can of MOA and five quarts and change in this engine. So let's start it up, uh, let it idle for a second, see how much oil there really is and uh, check it and fill it one more time. Ran for a few minutes, oil lights reset. Let's do a couple checks of the oil and I think we are kicking this thing out the door. It is right under the very top of the ferrule. There you have it, the Envoy XUV is fully wrapped up. This was a wonderful adventure. Uh, I'll put fuel in it and throw this bottle of 44K in with the fuel. Uh, I like to dump that in while I'm getting gas so I can run all of the fresh fuel down uh, after the 44K. So it's not just sitting in the fuel fill tube there. So uh, that's the end of the, the triple thread. We've got Motul in the Envoy XUV. It runs great. Everything works. I think it's ready to be sold. So it'll head over to the other side of the shop where the detail dudes can uh, jump on it. Make sure you're following those guys on Instagram. I'll throw a link in the description below and I'm sure you'll see uh, an update on this thing and then it will head out the door here shortly. So really cool. The convertible pickup truck that's also an SUV and also has 
cool things like the cornrow lights there. So when you're turning, it lights up everything beside the car. And, uh, and we're gonna do one more thing, headlights on everything in here because obviously there's a lot of cloudy headlights going on but once it's detailed we'll be ready to knock out those headlights so that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts just like this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i'll talk to you next time adrian c did get a hold of me the winner of the bmw x5 and look what came back <laughs> now it's diesel valve failure i guess i'll throw the rebuild kit in it